Saram, I just want to ex- share an experience, a personal experience of mine, um, where in 2013, I went through a reduction in workforce, as a result of a reduction in workforce at work, I was given the whole golden handshake. And it was my first experience in terms of going through a reduction in workforce exercise. I had a very healthy career uh, in, a, in a global multinational company and a very good uh, career trajectory where uh, from a single, uh, as, as, as an individual contributor, right up to a supervisor, manager and regional manager and even to a director level as well. So things were looking very, very good and I always thought that Swami was there to guide me. Then one day came where I was called into the office and I was given a letter and you can you you probably guess what it is right now. I was given a letter where it stated, Vignesh, thank you very much for whatever the reasons are that were stated. Uh, the company reorganization, company restructure. There's a template that that usually that you can already see that you receive. And my name was there, and they said that your services will no longer be required. And that was it. At the point of time when things were going up in a very positive trajectory, it didn't plateau. It just went the opposite direction. I that the news that came to me was quite shocking because it was uh, it was for the first time in my life. This happened in 2013, and just in 2011, my wife also packed her bags, you know, and with a lot of confidence, moved from Malaysia uh, to Australia. And uh, of course, you know, we 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 had plans in terms of how we were going to progress and settle down in Australia. So this naturally came as a shock. So I came back home, I sat and spoke to my wife and and my wife gave me the confidence that don't worry. Her, her words were just very soothing. It, it was a, as though it was the balm to an ache that you, you know, that you apply where immediately it just brings you down and said, don't worry, Swami will look after. We just have to now sit down and put it out there. What does this actually mean? And put it out there to Swami and get him to show us the way. Within three months, I, I got a job and uh, I started work. But financially, I had to take a 50% pay cut, not one five, but five zero, a significant amount given the commitments that we actually had at that point in time, not only supporting ourselves, but equally supporting the family in whatever way we could as well. But because of that financial commitment uh, or lack of, because of that salary uh, cut, I was also on the lookout for uh, other jobs as well. And then I was lucky that six months down the road, another job offer came and it was close. It was walking distance to my house, uh, very, very, so very near to the house. And they gave a little bit of a, a, a 20, a 15% increase in terms of the salary that I was earning um, in, in, in the second job where I got the 50% reduction. And I took that job. And while it seemed like as if that was the right thing to do at that point in time, a few months down the road, things were not really good at work. I was called into the office again, and this was one year later. I was called into the office again, and the entire scene was a rerun of what happened about 18 months ago. And there is a letter that says, Thank you very much, Vignesh. Your services are no longer required. You are hereby made redundant. You have no employment with this company anymore and you do not have to come to work tomorrow. And I thought to myself, I thought this only happens to people once. But it's happening to me for the second time. Again, came back home, sat down, spoke to the wife. But my wife was very calm and she said, it's okay, don't worry. Swami will look after. Let's just do what you have to do the, the time before and we will we will just leave it to Swami. So I went through the whole drill again, updating my CV, preparing myself for interviews, and uh, speaking to many people, recruiters, colleagues, referrals, all the entire activity. I could have almost started my own recruitment consulting company because I went through all the exercises, including diff- creating different templates of cover letters, you know, CVs, and all these kind of things. So. In interviews that came, even if they called me and they said, Ah, oh, Vignesh, uh, we saw your CV. We would like to speak to you and put you for an interview. Ah, uh, okay, all right. I will speak to you. No problem. I'll, pre- I'll prepare. 
where was the first experience that i had i got all excited you know i was preparing myself and one one of the interviews i went and bought myself a new tie in fact i stitched myself a brand new suit because i never knew had a suit at all for for an interview but this time around i just didn't do any one of that at all but in the lead up to the 23rd of november swami's birthday that particular year while 23rd of november was a monday the 22nd of november uh on the sunday was when the regional swami's birthday celebra- celebration programs was being celebrated so as all the preparation was coming along i volunteered myself and i said that i'm free so whatever running around you all would like me to do to go and collect some of the hired stuff and all that i'm more than happy to do so that's what i did and so friday as usual the setup was happening at the hall everything was being set up i went and collected then i realized that in the evening of that friday i saw a miss call now unfortunately inside the hall the phone reception was very bad so i actually had to come out then i realized that it was the hiring manager that actually called so i frantically tried to call him back again no response it was already 5 o'clock in the evening absolutely no response and i was i was a bit disappointed but then i thought to myself never mind it's okay leave it i'll probably speak to him first thing monday morning and i volunteered and i said I do not have uh, I do not have to go to work on a Monday so I will go and return all the items that we hired. So Monday morning came and that's what I did. We hired a van as well all the items were inside the car and I went and returned all the items the final thing the very last thing that needed to be returned was the van itself. So I went I uh, parked the uh, van at where the rental place was locked the van and I went to the counter and I was dropping off the key. and as the key was left my fingers at onto the counter the surface of the counter my phone rings i didn't think too much into it but i just picked up the phone when i picked up the phone hi vignesh how are you how was your weekend and in that conversation in a very casual manner he tells me oh by the way we would like to hire you for the role now to me at that very moment i thought to myself 23rd of November is a day everybody would like to gift something to Swami. Everybody would like to pledge something for Swami. Everybody would like to sacrifice something to Swami. But he is giving me a gift. After 6 months of unemployment and that entire weeks leading up to and that weekend where I just told him I got nothing to do so I will commit myself and make myself fully available for whatever you want to do for Swami's birthday celebrations and to me again that just sealed the deal do Swami's work and I will look after you and um I I got the job I got the offer letter and did that work uh started that work was with them for about 2 and a half years And guess what happens after two and a half years? I get called into a room again. I see the same white envelope on the on the on the table, and I see my manager, and I see the HR uh, director, and they and this and they call me in, and this time around they see and they and the HR manager starts to explain, due to the restructure of the organization of the company, your role. I said, please hold on, you don't have to explain to me. I know exactly. what the content of this of this letter is all about let us just go through what i'm meant to receive and i'm i will i will leave but in the midst of all of this that's going on in 2006 when i came to australia and the two years of gap where i started to feel that nothing was happening in my life there was a missing element and i started to get involved in in swami's activities started attending centers i started to to get involved in some of the service activities and somehow or other i was given the opportunity to 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 part, to be as an office bearer and serve as an office bearer in swami's organization i f- i i never felt the burden of the role as an office bearer compared to what i have to do in my worldly role going to work uh, every day because i felt that that strike the right balance my staff will ask me bigness how was your weekend i say my weekend only starts now 
Monday to Friday because Monday to Friday I'm in the office 9 to 5 and it's fixed. Where else Swami's work is any time of the day, whatever you have to do, if there's a service activity here and there, sitting down, going for budgets, planning for events and activities, it's even more of a, of, of a full-on activity. Uh, full on, full on road. Sometimes so much so, I will, I will even joke and say that my part time job pays for my full time uh, involvement in in the service in the Sai organization because that is basically how commit, in, how much I wanted to commit myself to doing Swami's work because I felt at every moment in my journey of the some of the challenges that I've experienced in life, Swami was there to look after and give me the assurance that. Do my work and I will look after you. So I got the third redundancy. Very good company, very good team and good pay. Office was fantastic. Now, one, one year later, and I know what you're going to think. You think I'm going to get the envelope and the letter again. But this time around, it was different. This time around, I tended a resignation. And the reason why I attended a resignation was because I didn't feel that career was giving was giving me giving me an opportunity to progress in terms of where I wanted to be. Although I've worked in multiple companies right now in the last few years, but it was very stagnant. So I decided to tender a resignation. Now, one might think that you'd only tender your resignation when you have a job, but no. I didn't have anything lined up. There was no interviews, nothing lined up. But I came back home and spoke to my wife and I said, I'm going to tender my resignation. My wife was cool and calm as ever. And she said, okay, if that's what you want, if that is, uh, you know, from your conversation with Swami, if that is what you feel the right thing to do, go ahead and do and Swami will guide. In my prayer to Swami when I was going through these redundancies, and going looking for jobs. I always used to pray to Swami, Swami, please, I need a job. Please, I need a job. I need a work. And immediately I'll get a phone call. Immediately after the prayer, when I, as soon as I come out from the altar, immediately I'll get a call and they'll say, Vignesh, there's a service activity that's going on or there's a role here that I'd like you to do. And everything was related to the Sai organization. And I had to actually go back to Swami and say, Swami, I think you're a little bit confused, Swami, because when I say I need a job, I need a paid job, Swami, because I've just been made redundant. I've lost my job. I need money to pay the bills. It's not that Swami doesn't know what you want, but it's that communication with Swami. Is that constant communication to build that relationship and that confidence and that conviction that Swami is listening to you. This time around, I left my job. But interesting, at that point of time, the 2019 National Conference was being organized. And at the same time, we had an event at the Satisai College in Australia, where we were organizing for the very first time what we call a Family Fund Day. And being the National Service Coordinator at that point of time, I was heavily involved in organizing these two programs. And when I tendered my resignation, and when I was involved in this, uh, in these two uh, organizing of these two major activities, the National Conference for Australia and the Friendship Fest for the Satisai College, for a moment I thought to myself, how am, how would I have managed these two items, these two events, had I had a full job? Because these two became my full-time job. Every day we had to go and do site visit. We had to go and coordinate all a lot of these uh, uh, conference-related items. You know, we had uh, overseas speakers coming in. We had to go and have a look at the venue. We had so many things we had to organize. The Satisai College was uh, quite uh, quite a distance away in, in in northern New South Wales, and had to figure out how we can coordinate. You know, with the school and everything of that sort. So many things were being organized, and that itself was a full-time job. So much so, this time around, I did not even have time to go and uh, apply for jobs and prepare myself for interviews because this became a full-time job. But the one thing that I did was this. When I tendered my resignation, the first thing I did was I listed down what is it that I wanted in my next job. And the very first thing that I wrote was, Swami, the next job I want is for me to be able to do your work that's what i want whatever the job may be but i want to make sure that the job allows me to do your work that was the very number one thing that i wrote 
and I wrote two or three more things. I won't go into the details, but at the same time, it wasn't a laundry list. It was very, very specific in what I wanted. But one of the other things that I actually wrote was, I don't want a manager breathing down my neck. So folded that, I kept it in the altar and I prayed and I communicated to Swami, Swami, I'm surrendering to you. This is my way of writing a letter to you. And this is basically what I want. And then I got a call one of the one one day and the guy had a chat with me and said, Hey, Vignesh, I'm so and so from this company and uh, we saw your profile and we would like to have a conversation with you. So again, I was very busy. I think I was driving at that point of time from the venue of the conference and uh, while we went and visited, I was like, yeah, okay, fine. You know, I'll, I'm happy to just send me the job description. I'll have a look at it. Then we'll have a conversation. So I had a, I had a, then he sent me an email. I had a read of the job description. And I thought to myself, this is very similar to some of the items that I listed, that I said earlier, that what I wanted in my next job. And I, uh, I called him back again. I said, okay, no problem. I'm more than happy to have a conversation. So we had one, two, three interviews. After the th and the third interview, I had to do a presentation. So in, and I had to find time still organizing the national conference and organizing and I still managed to find a little bit of time, put together a PowerPoint presentation, did a presentation. And a few days later, they tell me that they would like to hire me. Now, that may seem like a good news. Yes, it was. No doubt about it. But remember, after going through all the emotional roller coaster, I just accepted the news as it is. And of course, I was, I was, I was, I was happy, but I just accepted the news as it is because my mind was so occupied about these two major events. Then came my next dilemma when am i going to start because the national conference was in april and the uh, the friendship fest at the satisai college was in april as well and this was in middle of april uh, that when i got this interview when i got the uh, word that i got the job believe it or not the very next day i get a call from the company that uh, that offered me the role and they said, okay, Vignesh, everything is sorted out. We, we, these are the details and all these things. Your offer letter is coming to you. Um, you would have in your email, but it, you're also going to get it. Oh, and by the way, your start date is 6th of May. Way after end of April. And I didn't even have to tell him about my dilemma about the start date. But the icing on the cake or the cherry on top, however you want to describe it was, that particular year, 6th of May, Ishwaram Bade, that fell on the Monday. So again, this for me is a, is a sign from Swami that this is how he listens and this is how he replies. And sometimes the, 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 the mistake that we make is that we have an expectation in terms of how Swami needs to respond. And if Swami doesn't respond in that way, we feel like Swami is not listening. That Swami is not listening to our prayers. Swami is not responding. But that's not the case. And I've been in that job in 2019 since then. I've been in that job until now. And it's 2023. And very happy with the job. It ticked off all the boxes. Remember I said the first thing that I wrote in the list was, Swami, I need a job that's going to make me do your work. And that's exactly what that job is all about. It's given me all the allowance, all the time, all the flexibility, including, remember I said, I don't want a manager breathing down my neck. The manager was not even in the same country, not even in the same time zone. There's no opportunity for the manager to even breathe down my neck. But in addition to that, such a, a, an understanding a manager that I had, that I have, that fully understands what my commitments are, what my voluntary commitments are, where I spend my time during the weekend, what is it that I actually do and my involvement in, in, in the organization. I'm sitting here now sharing all these experiences uh, in my role as, as, as the national president of Australia, which is a full-time role in itself. But equally, work is also a full-time uh, full role with plenty of responsibilities. And as I'm sure many of us have that experience but I think to me what it has been most profound is where is Swami in all of that if if Swami's work and the organization is an extracurricular activity then the grace from Swami is also an extracurricular activity 
it's not that's full time if swami's work is something that we are passionate about and it's full time then the grace from swami is perpetual it's full time the grace from swami is always there it is how we realize and how we tap into it